The last time I was in Centerville was three years ago. It was a quiet little town, far off what might be called the main highway. After all the big cities I'd been in, Centerville under different conditions would have been a pleasant change. I'd come back because the Reverend Jeffrey Hallam had asked me to. We were very good friends and I knew there was something wrong. The Reverend Hallam doesn't make long distance phone calls and he isn't a man who sounds frightened, but he was when he called. I didn't ask questions, just took off. Michael. Hello, Jeff. Good to see you. I wasn't expecting you until this evening. It's good to see you. Come on in. Thanks. Here, let me take that, Michael. Thanks. Well, you haven't changed. In nothing have I changed but in my garments. King Lear, Act 4, Scene 3. Scene 4. <laughs> you haven't changed. You're right as usual. Jeff, you didn't tell me on the phone, and I didn't ask you. But now that I'm here, what's wrong? Nobody knows, Michael. Nobody must know. Not the police, not anyone. Well, sure, Jeff. Well, then, how shall I begin? How about the beginning? The beginning. The beginning is the most important part of the work, Plato. All right, the beginning is that someone is trying to kill me. I imagine it's up to you to find out the end. He told me what had happened. There wasn't much to tell. There'd been no letters, no threatening phone calls, just someone trying to kill him. That was the first attempt. It was a wide miss and the first warning. Then a few days later, he was returning from a call he'd made to a sick parishioner. He didn't see anybody, but somebody saw him. This time it was much closer. I didn't want to think about the next attempt. I was angry, Michael. I really was. You haven't told anyone about it? Mm, yes. The bishop, Bishop Minter. It was all so unusual. I felt I ought to get advice from him. Of course, he takes it quite seriously. I imagine he does. Why haven't you told the police? Oh. Well, it's awkward, Michael, but I can't. Why? There's a man here in town. They might suspect him. In fact, I know they would. Oh? Two years ago, he went to prison. I was instrumental in it. He's an unhappy man. One evening, I caught him stealing. They'd let him go before, but this time it was in the church. I had to tell the sheriff. Did he know it was you who had him arrested? Yes. You think he's the one who's been sniping at you? No, oh no. At least I don't think so. But if the sheriff found out, he's the logical suspect. After all, he's only been out of prison for three months, and all of his present troubles he blames on me. Has he ever threatened you? Well, not threats exactly. Let's call them remarks. Such as? Oh, I'm a dirty hypocrite, uh, a stool pigeon. And he said he was going to get even with me someday. I would say he's doing just that. But he was always angry, unhappy when he said those things, Michael. I don't believe he really means them. What's his name? Well, you want me to help you, Jeff? What's his name? Jack Proctor. But I'm not accusing him, Michael, and I don't want you to. I won't. But I want to find out what this is all about. I'm not a blameless man, Michael. There may be others who dislike me enough to do this. I try to live according to the testament. If thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Maybe that's just the point, Jeff. Hi. 
have a beer. Careful one. Who are you? Name's Lanyard. Tourist. No, I'm visiting a friend of mine, the Reverend Hallam. You want another? I buy my own. All right, suit yourself. Nobody I don't know buys me drinks. That's a good safety rule. Take it easy, Proctor. That's okay. Okay, okay. Did I ask you to buy me a drink? Did I? No. You were the soul of discretion. You looking for trouble? I try to avoid it. Occasionally it finds me. Go home, Proctor. Shut up. I don't like this guy. I don't like you either. All right, Proctor. That's enough. Outside. Get going. You want me to pull you in? It was my fault. I started the argument. Not with this man you didn't. He's the one that starts things around here. Get going, Proctor. He just asked for it, Lou. Every time, asking for it. Yes, and he's going to get it one of these days if he doesn't watch out. Well, it's too bad. He used to be a nice, easy-going guy. Well, it shows you. Oh, beer, Lou? No, thanks. Just saw Proctor in here and thought I'd stop by to see if everything was okay. Well, I'm glad you did. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Lanyard, Lou. This is Lou Putnam, our deputy sheriff, Mr. Lanyard. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Lanyard. And you. Visiting our fair town? That's right. Well, don't let Proctor give you the wrong impression. There's only one of him. We're a pretty friendly lot around here. Well, I'll be seeing you. Do you like living here, Ellen? I love it. How about your father? He's told you, hasn't he? Told me? Oh, it's all right. I know somebody's trying to kill him. Yeah, he told me. I thought he hadn't said anything about it. I got it out of him. I knew something was wrong. Michael, do you think it's that man Proctor? I don't know. I can't tell you what a relief it is to have you here. Dad's so stubborn, he won't tell the police. I know. He's a good and wonderful guy, that father of yours. He did something for me once about five years ago. He called it saving my soul. I've never forgotten it. Never will. I like you, Michael. I like you, too. Let's go for a walk, huh? You can tell me all about yourself, and you can brief me on some of the people who live around here. I'll get my coat. As well. This nightmare didn't seem real. It was too friendly a town. Suddenly, I saw a man raising a rifle. I knew I had to reach him before he fired. I'm going to shoot your father. Lucky you're around, Mr. Lanyard. I guess maybe it was. Well, you won't have to worry anymore, Reverend. He won't be trying a stunt like that for quite a while. I only wish I knew why he hated me so. Because you turned him in, that's why. Putnam, do you mind if I ask him a couple of questions? Sure, sure, it's all right for me. Go ahead. Proctor. Leave me alone. Why were you trying to kill Mr. Hallam? Are you a cop? No. Then mind your own business. Why did you do it? I didn't do nothing. I'm sorry, but I saw you. You're another busybody. You'll get yours. And I'll see that things are squared all around. I don't get it. Tough. You don't stand a chance this way. Why don't you say what's on your mind? I don't need you or anybody. They'll get theirs. You all will. I'm sorry. Looks like you're the one who's going to get yours. All right, Proctor. Let's go. You may have a point there, Jeff. 
It doesn't seem right to me. It, it's too pat, too easy. Unless he's crazy, and I don't think he is. Doctor knows something he's not telling. I wish I knew what it was. I've got an idea. What? I'm going to look for his gun. I'll go with you. Sure. The sheriff couldn't find it. The next morning after telephoning, I borrowed a car and drove 40 miles to see Bishop Minter. I had several questions, and I hoped that perhaps the bishop could help me find the right answers. Bishop Minter turned out to be rather different from what I had expected, although I can never quite figure out what it is that I or anyone else expects from a bishop. The bishop listened very quietly while I told him about the latest attack on the Reverend Hallam. Do you think this man, Proctor, is guilty? I'm not sure, sir. Bishop Minter, you can answer a question, if you will. Of course, of course. Has the Reverend Hallam ever done anything in the past? Uh, something wrong, perhaps? It may be impossible to answer that. Not impossible, but difficult. I find it dangerous to categorize people, Mr. Lanyard. Uh, a man is not a murderer just because he looks or sounds like a murderer. The Reverend Hallam is virtuous because, to begin with, he is the Reverend Hallam. As a man, he's made mistakes. So have I, you, all of us. But none, I think, to call for this, for murder. Then his mistakes haven't been enough to... Uh... No, Mr. Lanyard. Forgive me for asking, sir. Nothing to forgive. I wish I could be more helpful. You've known the, the Reverend Hallam for quite some time. Yes, we met about five years ago in Los Angeles. Oh, then you never knew his wife? I'm afraid not, sir. Sweet woman. It was quite a tragedy for Ellen as well. He's never spoken about it. Just how did she die, sir? It happened in San Francisco ten years ago. She died in an automobile crash. I don't think the Reverend Hallam has ever forgiven himself. The fault was not his. What happened, sir? The Reverend Hallam was driving. A woman ran out in front of the car. He tried to avoid her and uh, smashed into a truck. The woman was killed anyway, and Mrs. Hallam lived only for three months. Of course, there were witnesses, and the Reverend Hallam was not held. He's never driven a car since. You say this was ten years ago? Yes, it happened in July. Yes, July. Thank you, Bishop Minter. I'm very grateful for your help. The story was all there in the July 16th issue of 1944. It wasn't very pleasant. Now I had all the answers. Revenge in this case had made a man's mind sick. I took the paper with me. There was still one thing that didn't add up. I decided to go back to the jail. I wanted to talk to Proctor. You won't get anything out of him, Mr. Lanyard. It's a waste of time. I think I can, Sheriff. But I'd like to do it alone. Well, it's... It's not regular, but I guess it's all right. I'll be right outside. Hi. How are you? What do you care? That's what I like about you, Proctor. You're such a happy soul. I'll tell you something else. You haven't been trying to kill the Reverend Hallam, I know that. I don't care what you know. But you know who has, don't you? No. You saw him try it once, didn't you? That's what gave you the idea. You're crazy. You wouldn't kill him yourself. But you could see someone else do it. It's only his fault having me put in jail. Can't leave a man alone, always preaching, nosing around. I hope the next time he gets it. You had the chance. Why didn't you do it? I was playing at it, wanted to give him a scare. Proctor, I took this out of your rifle. It's what you were going to fire last night, wasn't it? 
A blank cartridge. Wanted to scare him. What's the name of the man who wants to kill him? You're so smart, you find out. I have. If I were you, Proctor, I'd get that chip off my shoulder. Might help. Next Sunday sermon. Mm -hmm. What is it, Michael? I want you to come down to the shutter's office with me. Has Proctor been released yet? No. You want me to go now? Yeah. What's it all about? I think I have the answer. But I can't be sure until we go down there. I'm basing this Sunday's sermon on Jack Proctor. We've never accepted him in this town, Michael. It's our fault, really. Why don't you wait and see? Quote, to judge a man, you must first know him. End of quote. Hamlet? Ben Johnson? I give up. Jeffrey Hallam. <laughs> I didn't want to tell Jeff yet what I knew. I wanted everyone together so that when I sprung the story, the nightmare would end once and for all. I'll bring Proctor in here. Michael, I wish you'd tell me what this is all about. I'm not sure myself, Jeff. Jeff was my friend. He hadn't been hurt yet, but sooner or later he would be. It was better to make sure it would be never. Sit down over here, Proctor. Okay. Jeff, did you ever hear of a woman named Margaret Lando? Margaret Lando, yes, I remember. I'm sorry, Jeff. No, no, that's all right. These things can't be put away and forgotten. Take a look at this. You ever see that man before? He was married to Margaret Lando. His name was Lando until he changed it. I didn't know. I didn't know. You saw him at the inquest. I suppose I did. I, I can't remember. I didn't forget your face, Helen. Mr. Putnam, Lando, I didn't realize. We were happy, real happy. It was a week before our second anniversary. That's when you killed her. I'm sorry, I, I can't. People like you shouldn't be allowed to drive. You murdered her. No, no, Putnam. It was an accident. Accident? She dies and they let you go. Well, I swore I wouldn't let you go. It took quite a while, but I finally got me this job up here. Supposing he'd recognized you? I didn't care. I wanted to make things tough for him. Tough. Then I saw he didn't recognize me. So I started to figure on killing him. No, and I could do it any time I wanted to. But first, I wanted to make him suffer the way he made me suffer when he killed Margaret. Proctor saw you shooting at him once. Did you know that? No. It doesn't matter anyway. Mr. Putnam, if there were only some way I could undo what I've done to your life. Sure. Sure, bring her back. That's what you can do. Make a miracle. Bring her back. All right. I guess the procedure now is a civilian arrest, isn't it, Putnam? You want to give me your gun? Are you kidding? You're a police officer. You know what the score is. Don't make it tougher on yourself. You know something? I just put the Reverend Hallam on trial for murdering my wife. Penalty for murder is death. We haven't got a gas chamber here, a chair, so... I've no desire to die. At least not in this way, Mr. Putnam. But even if I do, will that give you the miracle of which you spoke? 
Will it ease your sadness? You bet it will. Partner, you're wrong. Give me that. You got about one second to live. You're about to stay here. going to try to thank you. I'm glad of it. <laughs> I will, though. Thanks, Michael. You know, if I liked small towns and you were... But you don't like small towns. And my, uh, fiancé is getting back next week. I'm crushed. I'll bet. <laughs> I've been thinking it might be a good thing if you had a fence around your backyard. You get the wood, I'll fix it up for you. Thank you. The evil that men do lives after them. <laughs> the good is often turned with their bones. No, no, Michael. I think this time I prefer goodness is the only investment that never fails. Henry David Thoreau. And you're right. <laughs> so long, Jess. <laughs>